Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more BD Armoury and welcome to part two of our tutorial on basic aircraft tuning for complete beginners. In part one we went over more of the theory and principle behind the uh, the basic three setting tune in the BD Armoury autopilot unit, but today we're going to take a slightly more practical approach looking at things you might want to do before you start tuning your aircraft and also how you might go about the tune itself. In the background you can see a quick 2v2 I threw together between the two craft I have tuned the most recently, my low part mellifera and my upgraded spike tail F2. Uh, I just was curious to see how those two stacked up against each other and the uh, the two teams are captained by my brand new patron Kerbals, Ben Kerman and GT Kerman, who get... <laughs> who promptly get shredded very early on in the fight. Uh, anyway, thanks for the pledge guys. Anyway, yes, uh, let's get going. Just before we get right into the thick of it, I want to quickly recap what we discussed last time with the uh, the three basic settings we're talking about. We're out here on the runway with my spike tail F2, and there's there's two ways basically to access these three settings. We can either find the the autopilot unit on the aircraft, right click it, and click here to expand the PID controller. All the versions of BD Armory that won't be in its own little section. You'll just be able to see them uh, see them separately in this little window. We can also go and click on the BD Armory AI Manager. Uh, now this is re this is replicated in the uh, in the space plane hangar again in the most recent versions of BD Armory, and you'll find this on the toolbar in the bottom right of the screen in that situation. Again, we click on the PID controller, and we can see our three basic settings. Um, as we discussed last time, steer power is how hard your craft is going to try and turn to line itself up with the opponent. Uh, too high and that's going to start maybe flipping out a little, pulling some unfortunate manoeuvres, they're basically not really lining its guns up. We then have steer damping, that's going to be how hard your craft tries to smooth out the steering such that it sort of perfectly lines up that shot without overshooting. Uh, if this is too high you might find it negatively impacts your turning a little too much, makes the turning slower than it needs to be. And then the final setting, we have steer correction. This is basically just a correction factor for the um, for the fact you have a moving target. Uh, if this is too high, your craft will shoot too far in front of it. If this is too low, your craft will shoot uh, too far behind it. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's everything I wanted to cover there. So let's go and take a look at a couple of things we might want to take care of before we actually get into the tune itself. So we're up here circling above the KSC in one of my Lynxes, which is just trying to orbit in autopilot mode, but it seems to be having a bit of difficulty stabilising itself in the roll axis, and I've deliberately set it up that way. So what have I done? Have I, um, have I turned up the steer power? Have I turned down the steer damping? Actually, neither of those things. What I've done is to turn up the authority limits. I can't actually click it now. There we go. Turn up the authority limits on the ailerons, on these roll control surfaces. The Lynx will eventually stabilise itself out, but I've seen plenty of craft through the years that that will do the same thing and won't eventually stabilise. So, what's going on? How can turning up the authority on the roll control surfaces actually lower the stability? Well, let's, um, let's go and explain. We're back here in the space plane hangar with the Lynx, and we want to take a look at these uh, at these ailerons, these uh, roll control surfaces. What do we have here? We have the Elevon 3. Okay, if we look at that in the parts list, there it is. Let's bring up some of the stats here. We've got this little one here, actuator speed 30 degrees per second. It will travel 30 degrees per second. Um, now, these control surfaces, if you crank them up to their max, that is uh, an authority limit of 30 degrees. 30 degrees in either direction, which means that from one extreme to another, it's going to take two seconds to travel. Um, I mean, it's not a lot in the greater scheme of things, but if you're trying to uh, trying to stabilise the craft or if you're in a dogfight, that's, that's kind of an eternity. Uh, basically, for the stability issues we saw, the, uh, the control surfaces can't react quick enough to the angle of the craft and you inevitably overshoot. Uh, but aside from the stability issue, it's going to mean that your craft is slow to respond, and yeah, in a dogfight, that's not good news. So how do we tackle this? Well, the obvious solution is to turn down the authority limits on the uh, on the relevant control surfaces. That will mean your craft is quicker to respond, but might mean you don't get quite as much turning force, making your craft less manoeuvrable. So the trick here is just to use more control surfaces or larger control surfaces at a lower authority limit. Um, 
Also, you'll want to make sure your craft is as easy to turn as possible, so uh, so that you don't get that loss of maneuverability for the uh, the center of mass and center of lift. You might want to try moving those two a bit closer together so you can get away with, for example, here an authority limit of 15 degrees. Uh, for roll, you'll want to make sure that as much mass as is possible is close as close to the center line as is possible. Well, that's kind of a design flaw with these Lynxes. I've got these two huge engine nacelles quite far away from the uh, the engine line, so I've had to sort of design around that. But you, you kind of have to sort of make this consideration in all three axes. Uh, the yaw isn't quite so bad, you're just looking for basic stability here, so just make sure you've got enough con um, enough wing surface and control surface and that the authority limit just is enough to keep you stable there. The other consideration is uh, the leverage that your control surfaces are getting, or leverage for my American friends. Uh, the further away your control surfaces are from the center of mass, the more leverage they're going to get, the easier it's going to be for them to turn the craft. Uh, on my links, for example, I built this extra little bit on the back, basically for the purpose of ensuring that these elevators are as far away from the center of mass as I can reasonably get them and not have the craft look too weird. Um, same goes for any ailerons, if they are too close into the centre, you're not going to get quite the roll authority you, you need. Um, so yeah, if you set it up right you should find you get a craft that might be a little difficult to control manually, a little bit squirrely, but that should be alright provided the craft is basically stable. Uh, you should be able to uh, configure the AI so that it can um, not only overcome that, but actually take advantage of it. Uh, now there's uh, one final little consideration I want to look at, and that's with engine gimbal. Engine gimbal is a bit of a funny one. I mean, like control surface deflection, there can be a temptation to just whack it up to maximum because, you know, more turning force is better, right? And also it's much more responsive than the control surfaces are. So, you know, where's the problem? Well, um, first of all, if you oversteer, you might uh, you might lose intake air, you might uh, find you lose an engine, and for craft like the Lynx, you're in all kinds of problems there, even with the extra air intakes that that has. Um, if you do have sufficient air intakes, as I've sort of simulated here by turning on infinite propellant, then, I mean, well, things like the Cobra Maneuver are all very well and good in real life and do have their uses, but the AI in BD Armoury isn't anywhere near as complex enough to actually take advantage of that. Um, so all you end up doing is sort of over-maneuvering, slowing yourself right down and making yourself a bit of a sitting duck. I mean, engine gimbal is very useful. I mean, at slow speeds where the uh, the aerodynamics means you can't really turn that quickly, engine gimbal will basically provide you with a constant turning force that you can use to make sure your craft isn't as sluggish as it would otherwise be. But also at those slower speeds, you lose those stabilizing aerodynamic forces, putting you at risk of uh, putting you at risk of that oversteer. What I tend to like to do is leave myself a little bit of a gimbal just uh, to overcome that uh, lack of maneuverability at lower speeds. I tend to set it between about 10 and 20, depending on uh, 10 and 20 percent, depending on the craft itself. Um, anyway, I think that's taking care of all the preparation work for your craft to get it ready for the tune. I think it's well past time we actually get down to business and look at how you might go about actually tuning the craft. So for this, I'm basically just going to recreate the uh, the process I went through to tune my mellifera. I've put it up against two of my Red Hawks because I think the mellifera should be able to beat them, but will still provide them with a hard enough challenge. And also for this fight, we will be putting on paintball mode, which should mean it greatly minimizes the damage that gun hits get. It doesn't completely stop them, which is why if your craft really is laying into the other uh, into the other fighter then it can overwhelm it and basically just shred it but it should give us a little bit more time to ascertain whether or not uh, we are getting our tune somewhere in the right region let's uh, let's get this fight started Nearly at the 10 kilometer mark here, I'm using gun-only versions of both the Mellifera and the Red Hawk, so no possibility of a missile kill. Um, yeah, that got round reasonably quickly. I think we can, I think it's probably capable of turning a little bit harder. I'm just going to notch the steer power up by a couple there. It was no way, shape or form was it unstable in that turn, which would uh, sort of indicate we might need to, uh, might need to, oh my god. Two of them crashed into each other. Well, this is kind of a perfect opportunity for uh, to look at this one-on-one. -on -one allows me to just concentrate on the uh, 
concentrate on the one tune. That's pulling its shot well in front of the craft. Oh, it's shredding bits of it. So, yeah, I think I'm going to want to ease off on the steer correction there a little bit. Oh, that's... yeah. So that's done pretty well. Uh, I'm going to have to restart this fight and uh, with this basic tune and see if, what else we can do to improve it. The, cr the fight starts again, both craft with the newer tune again turning around. I think I'm going to up that to 13 actually. I think there's room in there for a little bit more turning power. And of course we are going to go and do the same on the other Mellifera as they close the distance between the uh, between them and the uh, and the Red Hawks. Oh god it's happened again hasn't it? Uh, collided again. Now this should be a bit of a sitting duck. Oh no! Don't forget the uh, don't forget the active Red Hawk Luna. That's not a good idea. Luna Kerman comes around now. How? Yeah, lots of wobbling there. Can't quite get the uh, get the shot off. We need to up that steer damping. I'm going to go all the way up to five. Just from how it was looking. Uh, where are we? Yep. Oh, the sound bug strikes again. Well, that should make the uh, the lining up of the shot a little smoother. Yeah, it's looking a little better now. It comes around. This will be the real test. Ah, still a little bit of it wasn't there. Can't wasn't kind of straight into the shot. A little bit of wobbling around there. A little, a tiny bit of wobbling isn't too bad. That's better. That is much better. That is a lot, lot better. Yeah, just the way it sort of came round and almost instantly stopped first time on that, um, in the right position. Still pulling its shot a little way in front of the other craft. I'm going to notch this down to 0.3. Uh, we're going to give this uh, one more test and see how this new tune does. Once again the competition starts. Um, I think there's still room in there to put a little bit more steer power on there. Yeah, I think it's not turning as quickly as it's capable of, so we'll see how we do with that. Both sets of craft now closing the distance, going in for the joust. Hopefully we won't have the same thing we did last time with just two of them uh, crushing into each other. Let's uh, let's up you to 14 as well. Let's do see, stick with Luna Kerman. Still still dragging that shot a little in front. Oh no, actually that was pretty much perfect. Comes around. Yeah, very little wobble in there. Is able to line up the shot promptly, I think. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Maybe pulling the shot a little bit behind now. I am going to just notch that back up a little bit. Oh, one of the Red Hawks has crashed into the ground. Yeah, let's notch that back up a tiny little bit. Leg of that Kerman. Oh yeah, right on the tail of that uh, right on the tail of Red Hawk. Oh, now in a bit of trouble as the Red Hawk brings his own guns to bear. Comes right around. This is looking good now. Oh. <sighs> Maybe starting to drag the shot a little bit behind now, but yeah, both sets of craft doing really well in picking out their target. Oh, that is that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes. Not perfect, but I think we're getting there as far as a rough tune goes. Yeah, both sets of craft able to come around, line up shots pretty easily. I think. Yeah. I think we're pretty much there. I mean, this is just sort of as a rough tune. Um, I'm not that much of an expert on it, but y you can go and fine-tune this as, as much as you want, really. Yeah, well, for as long as you can stand doing this sort of thing. But okay. I think that is a decent basic tune on the Mellifera, and that's how I went about it. Just making sure it had enough steer power, but not too much that it was uh, as a, too squirrely and wobbly in the turn. Making sure it had enough bit of friendly fire there. Making sure it had enough steer damping that it could sort of get in there and line up its shots first time, but not too much that it was actually sluggish, and then adjusting this steer correction so that the, the shot was not sort of pulling too far in front or too far behind. I think I, st I still have a little bit of work to do on that one, but as I said, as a rough tune, I think this is pretty good. 
anyway, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have and you haven't already, then please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord great KSP and BD Armoury community on there. All those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, you too can get your own little patron Kerbal to be mercilessly killed time and time and time again, as well as access to the uh, patron-only Discord and stuff like that. Um, I will be back soon with some more BD Armory, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.